Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stories that uh, we've got for this episode. Over at Extreme Tech at uh, streamtech.com, Unreal Engine 4 now supports Linux and SteamOS. Is this the year of desktop Linux? That's the question they're asking. Maybe it could be, who knows? Uh, Unreal has announced that Unreal Engine 4.1, due to be released in the next couple of weeks, will fully support SteamOS and Linux. Developers can take their games, whether they're indie or AAA uh, titles, flip a switch and voila, the game is packaged and ready to run on SteamOS and Linux. Suffice it to say, this could be a huge step toward making Linux a viable platform for gaming. Could 2014 finally be the year of desktop Linux, otherwise known as YODL, Y-O-D-L, Year of Desktop Linux. Now, I would say it would possibly help, but um, people have been, you know, saying this could be the year of desktop Linux for a variety of things now. Uh, this isn't the first time that this has been proffered, and so... Um, you know, it's possible that, you know, a solid game platform with a couple of, you know, solid game engines that, that support Linux could do it. But, you know, largely Linux has failed on the desktop for a variety of reasons that don't have anything to do with games. I mean, games may help boost it. Games may, you know, make it where, you know, uh, 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 you know technical people, somewhat technical people that wouldn't normally play uh, or wouldn't normally install Linux may end up installing Linux for a variety of reasons because of the games. But, you know, I don't think that alone is going to make it. You know, the Steam Box has more, it, it has way more opportunity to give, you know, much more traction to Linux uh, in general. Um, and, and even then, that's kind of a pre-packaged Linux. It's not, you know, the full tamale, if you will. So, could be interesting. Uh, only time will tell. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where it's a wait and see type of thing. From Ars Technica, open network Linux could boost the viability of vendor neutral switches. That's right, software agnostic switches on the roadmap for Facebook's Open Compute project. The Facebook led Open Compute project has spent the past year building an open switch, and I'm using the, the open in air quotes here. They can boot nearly any type of networking software, giving customers more alternatives to proprietary switch vendors like Cisco. Intel, Broadcom, Mellanox, and Cumulus Networks jumped on board last November, contributing specifications and software that will bring the project closer to a finished design. They weren't alone, though. Software-defined networking vendor Big Switch Networks in January donated what it calls Open Network Linux to the project. So, pretty cool. Uh, at the Interop uh, conference in Las Vegas, uh, the newly appointed Big Switch CEO, Douglas Murray, explained the company's reasons for getting involved. He basically says uh, that the Linux distribution for bare metal switches that runs underneath our switches is uh, commercial switch light OS. Their goal is to give people deploying the Open Compute Project switches a simplified experience with a standard Linux distribution that comes prepackaged with all of the relevant drivers, loaders, and platform independent goodness. So basically, you know, they want to make life easy. Who can blame them? If only everybody else would be that way. Unbelievable. Uh, from Tech Republic over at techrepublic.com, there's a story here, 10 reasons why the Ubuntu phone should be your next mobile device. Yeah, uh, the Ubuntu phone is set to launch this year. With more and more major players getting on board as hardware suppliers, you can bet the darling of the Linux mobility 
of Linux mobility will slowly find its way into every market imaginable. The big question mark is the U.S. market, with Android and iOS having a stranglehold on U.S. customers. Can this new mobile platform make it? I firmly believe that the Ubuntu phone not only can be your next mobile device, it should be. And here are 10 reasons why. So that's the, the beginning of the article. I'm not going to go into uh, the rundown of each of the reasons, but I will tell you each of the reasons. Uh, number one, Unity, Unity Interface. Uh, the author of the article here has a paragraph or so for, for each of the reasons explaining why it's a reason and why it's a valid reason. Two, updates. Uh, three, easy customization. Four, so many apps. Five, security. Six, desktop integration. Seven, universal device UI. Eight, search. Nine, easy gestures. And 10, cloud integration. So the I largely agree with a lot of these, um, except for number two, updates. Um, I'm not gonna go into it, but you know, as an iPhone user that experiences updates, you know, it's downright offensive uh, what happens over in Android land as, as far as updates go. You know, not only that, but it's not that easy to switch phones versus on an iOS, as long as you back your phone up either in iTunes or over iCloud, when you get another phone, I, you know, when you get another iPhone, it's just a simple matter of restore from this backup and boom, your phone is exactly the way it was before you switched phones. So, um, same thing with updates, you know, Apple releases updates uh, until the device is no longer supported and it's generally two or three device generations back. So when you buy an iPhone, it's supported for a number of years and receives software updates for a number of years. So, you know, I, I think the updates section here in the article refers mostly to Android land. And the vast majority of Android phones, you know, they come with whatever version, you know, it, it, the vendor puts on there and it's never updated, never patched, never, you know, just it's really downright scary, especially considering, you know, you can have, you know, problems that you need to fix. So anyway, uh, from muckedware.com, Indian State drops Windows, switches to Linux. We all know Microsoft is dropping support for Windows XP very soon, and no one is very happy about it. In fact, it turns out a lot of people are switching platforms so they can avoid upgrading to Windows 8. That other platform is Linux. And what's happening is uh, parts of India are doing exactly that, fully abandoning Windows. Tamil Nadu has issued a directive to local government departments asking them to switch over to open source software in the wake of Microsoft's decision to end support for Windows XP this month. This is something they could have been doing for quite some time because, you know, Microsoft cannot continue to support an operating system for as long as it has, at least not cost effectively. What are they thinking? You know, th this is business. You know, how old is, Mike, is Windows XP? It's over 10 years old at this point. It is really old. So, uh, really? I mean, I, I yeah. Amazing. Anyway, um, check the article out if I thought it was interesting. From Computer Weekly over in the Open Source Insider blog, Intel beefs up the Open Source Raspberry Pi Challenger and slashes its price. Uh, Intel has beefed up its open source single board computer and cut its price in half. The middle board Max features an open hardware design and is targeted at software application development pros and enthusiasts who want to code for the deeply embedded market. Interestingly enough, you can probably see it from here, uh, right there is a middle board and I have the box to it. Uh, Right there, you can kind of see it behind the uh, Lego thing. Um, I've been doing some development on the middle board, so this is interesting to me. I, I'm, I'm actually looking at picking one of these up just so that I can uh, monkey around with it. At any rate, um, the middle board Max features an open hardware design. It's targeted at software application development pros and enthusiasts who want to code for the deeply embedded market. 
They have slashed the middle board price from $199 to $99, although dis distributor prices may vary and not all have reflected the price reduction at the time of this particular article. So uh, pretty awesome. Definitely check this out, especially if you are looking. Now the thing, the nice thing about the middle board is it's a full on x86. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to do anything funny to get stuff to work. Um, pretty, pretty awesome. From InfoWorld, the Linux 3.14 kernel revision beefs up ARM and uh, virtual machine support. Definitely check it out. It may be, uh, the revision number may be 3.14, but don't expect any pie jokes in the release notes. Do, however, look past the matter-of-fact release announcement on the Linux kernel development mailing list for some intriguing improvements in ways that may have implications for cutting-edge processors and for cloud-slash-VM environments. So things have changed, as they always do. Definitely read the release notes. Uh, I've got another link. Also from Mucktware. Let's see here. Star Conflict is coming to Linux. Now, Star Conflict is a video game, obviously. And I wish my page would load. Apparently, uh, the website Mucktware.com is down. But uh, basically, it's a video game. It's being it's being ported to Linux. Uh, sounds interesting. I thought I'd include it because, you know, Linux guys do play video games, obviously, which is why, you know, SteamOS and, you know, major platform manufacturers uh, like, you know, that do things like the Unreal Engine uh, are supporting Linux. So uh, definitely check it out. It's pretty cool. Mocktware was just working on one of my other links, so I don't know why that's finally would come up. Anyway. Uh, that will do it for this edition of the Geekinator, as all, or Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com or if you're on YouTube right here underneath the show notes, or right underneath the video. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.